Song ye cho dang so ki chuk nam la. Jung cho ba do dak ni kyap so chi. Dak chi jin shuk ji pe so nam ki. Dro la pan chie sang ye drupa shok pe. In the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Sangha, until enlightenment we take refuge in you. May we, through the merit of generosity and so on, achieve Buddhahood for the benefit of all sentient beings. Pay. Welcome to Tridevi Chamunda Mandir in Denver, Colorado. This is Yamajit. Thank you for joining me for day 22 of Tibetan Book of the Dead Sadhana. Uh, we've had some more changes during this long weekend, so what you are watching is a pre recorded uh, session. Today's session is called The All Determining Influence of Thought. And I'm going to start by reading the instructions to the efficient. Say that for, by such setting face to face, despite the previous non-liberation, liberation ought surely uh, to be obtained here. Possible, however, liberation may not be obtained even after setting face to face, and earnest and continued application being essential, again, calling the in calling the deceased by name, speak as follows. So I invite you to sit comfortably and close your eyes. Begin taking some deep breaths, taking a moment to ground and to center. And begin to visualize the person for whom you're doing this sadhana sitting opposite you. calling out their name three times silently. And acknowledge that you are being a conduit of this information to the person whom you're working with, and also for the souls of all beings lost in the state of Bardo. O nobly born, and I invite you to call the name one more time. Your immediate experiences will be of momentary joys followed by momentary sorrow, sorrows of great intensity like the taut and relaxed mechanical actions of an elastic band, do not be in the least attached to the joys, nor displeased by the sorrows of that. If you are to be born on a higher plane, the vision of that higher plane will be dawning upon you now. Your living relatives as a dedication meant for your benefit may be performing religious ceremonies and giving alms. You, because of your, your vision is not purified, may be inclined to grow angry at their actions and bring about at that moment your birth in a lower, painful mental state known as the hells. Whatever those left behind may be doing, act so that you are not angry and meditate upon love for them. Furthermore, even if you feel attached to the worldly goods you have left behind, or because you see such worldly goods of yours in the possession of other people who are enjoying them, you shouldn't feel attached to them through weakness, or feel angry at your successors. That feeling will affect the psychological moments in such a way that even though you are destined to be born on a higher and happier plane, you will be obliged to be born in a low realm, the world of the hungry ghosts. On the other hand, even if you are attached to worldly goods left behind, you will not be able to possess them, and they will be of no use to you. Therefore, abandon weakness and attachment for them. Cast them away wholly, renounce them from your heart. No matter who may be enjoying your worldly goods, have no feeling of miserliness, but be prepared to renounce them willingly. Think that you are offering them to your teachers and abide in fe the feelings of non-attachment 
devoid of weakness and desire. Again, when any recitation of prayers is being made on your behalf as a funeral rite, or when any rite for those absolving your past bad deeds, which is liable to bring about uh, your birth in lower regions, is being performed for you, the sight of their being such conducted in incorrect ways, mixed with sleep of distractions, of non-observance, of vow, vows and lack of purity on the part of any earthly person, and such things indicating levity, all of which will be able, you will be able to see because you are endowed with limited superhuman powers, such as the ability to see others and even read their thoughts. This may make you feel a lack of faith, an entire disbelief in your religion. You will be able to recognize any fear and fright, any black actions, irreligious conduct, and incorrectly or carelessly recited rituals. In your mind you may think, alas, they're indeed doing it wrong. Thinking this, you will be extremely depressed and, through great resentment, you will acquire disbelief and loss of faith. Instead of affection and humble trustfulness, this affecting the psychological moment, you will be certain to be born in one of the miserable states. Such thought will only be, be of no use to you, but will do great harm. However, incorrect the ritual and improper conduct of the priests performing the ritual rites. Think, what? My own thoughts must be impure. How can it po be possible that the words of my teacher or religion should be incorrect? It is like a reflection of the blemishes on my own face, which I see in a mirror. My own thoughts must indeed be impure even if imperfectly imper uttered, find refuge in them. Thinking like this, put your trust in them and, ex and exercise sincere love towards them. Then whatever is done for you and those by those left behind will truly tend to benefit you. Therefore, the exercise of that love is as much importance and do not forget this. Again, even if you were to be born in one of the miserable states, and the light of those of that miserable state shone upon you, yet by your successors and relatives performing well-intentioned religious rites unmixed with evil actions, and the teachers and learned priests devoting themselves, body, speech, and mind to the performance of the correct meritous rituals, the delight from your feelings greatly cheered at seeing them will, in their own virtue, so affect the psychological moment that even though you deserve a birth in an unhappy state, you will be brought about to a birth in a higher and happier plane. Therefore, you should not create impious thoughts, but exercise pure affection and humble faith towards all impartially, this is highly important, hence, be extremely careful. Om Ahom. Om Ahom. Om Ahom. Pay. I invite you now to take a deep and clearing breath. Letting go of the meditation for now, and slowly open your eyes, and as always, I encourage you to take some time for quiet meditation before resuming your daily activities, and I invite you to join me at noon Denver time tomorrow for day 23 of Tibetan Book of the Dead Sadhana. Namaste. Blessings always. Thank you so very much for joining me. And Jay Matadi. Jay Matadi. Jay Matadi. Jay Ma.